Hi everyone. It will start in a while. There are still quite a lot of people that are still admitting to join the meeting, so let's wait a while. Oh, baby, let me do it on that. It's cool. You better do it soon. No time will be. We will start in a minute. Okay, guys, so hi everyone. We will start now. First of all, welcome to the Back to China sharing session presented to you by the volunteer department of ISU from SCAD. I'm Josie and I'm the head of volunteer department of ISU this year. And I'll also be your MC for tonight. Well, first of all, thank you guys for joining our talk. Tonight, there will be two speakers to brief you guys about the things that you have to do before getting to China and after arriving in China as a foreign student. So the first speaker, he is Gandhi and he's from Indonesia. He's been in China for a year and he's from the class of 2021. And we have our second speaker. He is Walid from Jordan. He is also a student from the class of 2021, but he's been living in China for 20 years with his family. So yeah, let's start. 
and we will first hand our mic to Gandhi. Gandhi, are you there? Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to open my mic. <laughs> yeah, thank okay. you very much for the thank you very much for the introduction. And hello everyone, I'm Gandhi, and today I'm going to be going over the pre-departure process up till the accommodation part of the post arrival in China. Now, uh, without further ado, let's start our presentation. Now, let us see our table of contents here. These are the topics that are, we are going to be going over today. And you can see here, uh, it's split into two parts, which is the pre-departure process and the post-arrival process. Next, please. Next slide. Okay. Ah, yeah, and the first one that we're going to talk about today is the visa application. Next, please. Oops. Uh, uh, yeah, there, okay. Uh, and in this slide, you can see the requirements that are needed to apply for a visa application. And if you pay attention, the requirements that are needed to apply for a visa actually differs with, uh, if you're an old student and whether you're a freshman. If you see, whether you, when you're an old student, you'll need a visa application form with signature, visa application form, a visa appointment form, one ID photo, passport hard copy and soft copy, returning to school certificate soft copy, vaccination certificate soft copy. It's a little bit of documents, but when you're a freshman, you need more. Uh, in this case, you need a school admission notice, JW 201 or 202. It, uh, it, might de it depends on the country that you're in. And yeah, uh, those two are the ones that's needed. And one thing to note from my experience is that uh, you might not need a hard copy. It depends on the country and the city that you're living in. In my case, I didn't need a hard copy to apply for a visa. And now we're going to talk about the procedure to apply for a student visa. You can see here, number one is to consult the Chinese embassy of your country about visa application. Number two is ask for corresponding visa material to school admission office, such as JW202. If you don't have the soft copy, you can you can ask for the hard copy, but it might not arrive in time before your uh, your flight. So yeah, try to get uh, try to make do with the soft copy. And number uh, three, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Jensen. Sorry? Yes, uh, we we will send the PDF after that. Okay, you may you may proceed. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. And number three contact the teacher and the student of management office after you purchase the ticket. Number four, document requirement, the one that I said before. And number five is online registration at this website that we have linked over here. It's basic, it's a visa, a visa application website that is applicable for almost all countries, I think. And number six, uh, book an appointment with the visa center through the website that we have given. Next, please. Number seven, visiting visa center for documentary submission. Number eight, track the progress. Number nine, collect your visa. Next, please. And yeah, as I said before, the requirements in every country are, are not always the same. So you should check again with your country what is required. Uh, do you need a hard copy? Do you need a soft copy? Do you need JW202 or 201? Next, please. Yeah, now the second topic that we're gonna talk about is survey on airline tickets. Next, please. And to survey your uh, airline tickets, you need to follow these steps. First is to fly within three months after you got your visa because it doesn't last that long. Number two is choose your ideal date of arrival in China. Number three, compare the prices to save your money. Number four, make a decision between direct flight or transit flight. I'll just recommend a direct flight most of the time because transit takes too much time. <laughs> it just takes too much time and it's not worth it. Number five, be aware of the baggage selection of the flight in case you want to bring a lot of stuffs. Number six is, yeah, wish you a safe journey back to China. Next, please. Okay, now number three, the topic that we're going to talk about is survey on accommod accommodation. Okay, now these are the points that you need to make sure when you're choosing a place you want to live on. First is make sure which campus are you located in, Wushan campus, university town campus, or international campus. And then search for the nearest stay from your campus if it's not that expensive. And then ask, uh, ask some of your friends to live together to share the cost. Next, please. 
Now we're going to talk about insurance that is mandatory for all students. Next, please. Oops, sorry, hold on, okay. Okay, yeah, this is the steps that you need to purchase an insurance before going to China. Uh, first, you go to this website that we have linked in this PowerPoint. You can go ahead and look at it later. If you're not fluent in, uh, in the Engl uh, if you're not fluent in Chinese, you can change the website language to English. Next, please. Uh, hold on, guys. Uh, I'm sorry. I have to uh, accept some of the attendees. So I'll, let me interrupt. Oh, wow, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now the third step is enter your passport number at CAPTCHA and then click on buy insurance as uh, you as is shown on the picture. Next, please. Number five, tick the read and agree with terms and conditions box. And then number six, after you're done with the steps, uh, press next step. Next, please. Number seven, enter your information and choose the six month plan. There's actually one more plan that's one year, but I usually just go with the six months. And then number eight, you can pay with Alipay, WeChat, or Visa, or MasterCard, or any credit card as far as I know. Next, please. Number five is the nucleic access asset test, known as VCR. Okay. Now, for the nuclear exit test, you need to take it within 48 hours before flight departure and can only take flight when the test result is negative. In this case, I would say it's, it depends on the, on the flight that you're in. Depends on the flight that you're in. Uh, for example, in my case, I needed two PCR tests, tests before coming to China. One 48 hours before the test and then two, yeah, so a, a total of three. So I need one before the uh, 48 hours before the flight, and then two 24 hours before the flight for a total of three tests. So during that time, it was really, really hard to come to China and really costly because of the PCR test. But now you can go ahead and check with your flight how many PCR tests do you need. So yeah, this information can change according to time. And then the certificate requirements are, the certificate requirements are containing the name of the person tested, date of test report, test method, name of test facility and contact details, official language of the place of departure or in English, checked by the flight op operator of the flight to China, a paper report, if the testing agency has issued an electronic report, please print it and bring it with you. It's very important, so make sure you get this done. And number six is health declaration to China customs. Health declaration to China customs uh, is something that's mandatory to do before you come to China or even you, before you board on your flight. So basically, it's just a simple health declaration to the to the government over here or the embassy to show that you are eligible for the flight. Next, please. Okay, now we're moving on to the post arrival in China part, and the first one that we're gonna talk about is the a Chinese phone number. Okay. Okay. A Chinese phone number is very mandatory in China. It's basically one of the most important thing that you need to do once you arrive in China. It's the number one thing that you need to do. So how do you get it? Actually, you need to bring your passport and admission letter to a local mobile service center, make a mobile number phone package and your desired number. And then as for the importance, you can see here to buy a bank account, contact schools and relevant authorities such as medical centers, online shopping purposes, emergency calls, apps authorization, online payment activation for WeChat Pay and Alipay. It's very important and basically everything here revolves around your phone number. Next, please. And number two is accommodation. One thing that's very important about accommodation is that you need to register to the lo local police station within 24 hours after arrival to China. Uh, let me clarify a few things about this point. For example, if you're living in a hotel in your first day of arriving in China, this procedure will be automatically done by the hotel that you're living in. On the other hand, if you're living in an apartment in your first day of arriving in China, you need to take the required documents and go to the local police station to register yourself. As for the required documents, they will later be shared by my friend Walid. We'll now uh, move on to the first requirement to get accommodated. 
as you see here, the first requirement is Chinese phone number. As I said, it's very important just now, so don't miss it. Number two is a temporary accommodation, such as hotel, if you don't have a place to stay at yet. Number three is friends or relatives. To, as I said before, a tip uh, is to share the cost of living with your friend to make it cheaper. Number four is, of course, money. And number five, if you're going to sign your own documents, you need a at least a little bit of Chinese proficiency skills. You don't need a lot, but you need a bit at the very least. And now I'll be breaking down the costs and fees that are uh, that are there when you're gonna rent uh, an apartment over here. The first one is the monthly rental fee. Monthly rental fee is the fee that you have to pay to the house owner monthly. It is usually negotiable before signing the contract. Number two is the deposit. Deposit is a fee that you have to pay after signing the contract. It's similar to an insurance. The deposit fee is usually two times the amount of the rental fee and will be returned to you once you finish renting without any damage to the property. And of course, if you've done any damage to the property, then the deposit will be deducted. Number three is agent fees. Agent fees are the fees you have to pay to the agents that help you uh, find and rent the apartment. The fees are usually half of the monthly rental fee and it's only paid once after the contract is signed. Then the next one is security fee. Each apartment has their own security fee starting from 100 yuan to 200 yuan per month. Usually it varies, uh, it varies from places to places, but it's usually counted by the meter squares that your house is actually is. Like for example, if your house is 100 meter squares, then it might be 200 yuan. It's something like that. And then the water and electricity fee is the fee that you have to pay for your water and electricity usage. The cost varies from place to place and you can consult this to your agent. Next, please. Yeah, and here is the example. If you see here, if your monthly rental fee is 2,200 RMB, the deposit will be two times of that, which is 4,400. And then the agent fee, the agent fee is 50% of your monthly rental fee, and it's 1,100. The security fee, I just uh, set here as 150, just to take a middle ground for the, from the 100 to 200 range that I said just now. The water and electricity fee, from my experience, for one month, 200 RMB is okay for 2%, at the very least in my place. So now when we break it down, the total fees at the first month is 2,200 plus 4,400 plus 1,100 plus 150 plus 200 equals to 8,050 RMB on the first month that you have to pay. Total fees in the upcoming month is 2,200 plus 150 plus 200. As in your monthly rental fee, your security fee, and your water and electricity fee. And now we move to the tips and tricks. The first one is find apartments that are close to your university or metro subway stations. And there are some exclusions to this. For example, if you're going to Ta Chung, over there it's pretty expensive. So I wouldn't recommend to find a place there unless, of course, you're, if you don't mind about it, about it being too expensive, it's okay. But in my opinion, it's better to not go there if you want to save some money. Number two is get a friend or more to live together. Number three, look for places a couple of metro stations away from university. And this is supporting my point from number one. If you don't have that much money to spend and live in Tao Chang, you just go a couple of metro stations away and you can find cheaper rent over there. Number five and number four is as an agent to assist you to find a rent. This is the most common way of doing it. And then another one is another tips and tricks. Don't look for places that are located on the edge of the city. Everything will be so far. Yeah, if you go so far into the outskirts of the city, you, every time you take the MRT to school, it will take at the very least two hours and so on. And back and forth, it will take four hours in total. So I'd say don't do that. Uh, I'll, I'll answer the Q&A later on. I'll, I'll later there will be a Q&A session and I'll answer your question, Rahmat. And then the next one is beware of scam sites or suspicious deals. The last one is best to not live in Chengchong Village or USO district, such as Xiaopei, Tengfeng, Tengfeng Street, and other complexes area. Okay, that's it for my part. And now I'll be handing over the mic to Walid. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so Gandhi. Much, Gandhi, for important information. And now let's move to the other part of our lecture. First, we will talk here, or number three part, we'll talk about medical examination. Next. So medical examination is one of the important things that you need, of course, to apply for the resident permit in China. 
So how to make an appointment for that? Uh, first of all, you need to use your WeChat to follow the GZITSC on WeChat. No, like you need to type this on WeChat and then follow it. After follow it, it show you here the marked area that we have already marked. It say Churu Huang Tijian exam, which uh, you need to type it. After that, it will show you automatically this page white page which uh, will show you here uh, all the instruction and then from there you need to type start at the end of this page next after that it will automatically show you this page uh, we need to fill information of course so you will write uh, entry at the first and then write your all information like your student your surname given name and of course your occupation will be students and all important things that uh, it require after you finish all this and press next it will show you uh, um, the dates which is available from the um, uh, physical physical examination record department and you need to choose date. Well, my advice for this, uh, when you choose date, try to choose it like as much like earlier you get, because like seriously, if like um, make it more late, if you're a little late, it will take the result will take also lots of time. So try to find them like the, the early things you can get or the fast thing you can get. And then after you choose the time which is suitable for you, it will show you this QR code and it show you also the time and it will show you when you will go get to the, the, to the department. Um, of course, you need to take a screenshot and save it because you need it next in the department when you arrive there. Next. So uh, might all of you asking which like, um, what we think what we need to prepare when you go when we go there actually the first thing we need the chinese phone number as gandhi mentioned the Ch phone number is really important in china and it it uh, like needed everywhere second entry stamp copies uh normally you know when you use your visa and enter china they will stamp your passport so entry stamp it needed to be a copy you need to print it out and then you need to print your uh, second, third thing you need to bring with you is your original passport and photocopy. Of course, your original passport would must be with you and photocopy of your passport, which have your um, information, the page of information. Uh, number four is student entry visa. Of course, you need the photocopy of your visa. Uh, fifth, you need the four photo ID, which means the four photo you need before that, you go to studio and take photos. And we will uh, speak of that uh, later in our lecture. And six, you need to bring your JW202, the original one, and the, and the photocopy of it, of course, and your student ID, which is important. Next. And for number seven, uh, police verification paper, which is a photocopy, of course, uh, which is approve your address in China. Um, no, it depends, like normally they will not ask for it, but keep it with you in case if they ask. Also important. And appointment form, which as I mentioned, the QR code that uh, you have made, uh, we talk about it in the last uh, slide. And remember that the fees here is like 483 RMB for your visit. Um, however, if you are students and you can approve your JW that approve that you will uh, stay for more than uh, for more than a year in our university, then the charge will be free. So you need, don't need to pay that 400 RMB. And here, uh, four important thing that you know, like more information about medical examination. Actually, first of things, um, you don't have to pay for all of medical examination. If you prove that you have uh, also you have done physical examination form in your country, if you have it, then it's free of charge and also it will be make fast process for you. Second, uh, in during your uh, visit in medical examination, actually, um, they will include ECG, chest X-ray, blood test, uh, HIV and VDR, all these. Um, does not require the original film in the report 
if it's available, which means if you have the one from your country, actually these things you don't have to do it. But if you don't have it actually, so yeah, you need to do all these in the department, which will take estimating time, take uh, 40 to 50 minutes to finish all these. Third, the photograph of medical report with the stamp of a medical hospital that did the medical examination. Of course, if you want to bring it from your country um, uh, for this paper, it needs to be stamped from the official hospital there. And for the fourth thing that uh, you need, of course, uh, as I mentioned, if you want to make uh, the medical examination record that you need your JW202 and 201 form to have a study and a proof that you have studied for more than a year. Uh, so that medical examination record, it will be free. And of course, most of us guys like have this, so it must be free, of course. You don't have to pay the 400 RMB. Next. And for the address of location, of course, like uh, lots of people, especially who's a new in our uh, university, who's come to China new, they will ask for this question. So we have here put a lot of addresses and one of them from Ushan campus. You will take the line tree and get off in Ganding station. And however, you can use the Baidu map and other maps available in China. However, we provide here the address that you need it later. And also we have provide from uh, Ta Xue Chen campus and from international campus. Normally all this information, you can see it anytime from the map. Uh, so even if you're not in the campus, so in your outside, so you can like check it from your a device anytime. Next. Uh, the fourth thing we the fourth thing we need to talk about is the bank account, which is also important for all of us. Well, normally the requirement of each bank are different, but mostly the important one are as a follow. So yeah, there's a lot of you know, uh, banks in China and most of them will ask the same requirement as we will say now. First of all is the China phone number, which is also important, the important thing, of course. And second is a student resident permit. I mean, after you get your student uh, resident permit, of course, you need a photocopy of it and you bring your pass original passport with you. Third is the admission notice, uh, which is kind of important. And some branches actually will ask for student ID with the admission notice, and some of them will ask for student ID. So it depends on the branch and depends on the bank name. But most of all, like all banks will require these four. Some of the some of like um, want to mention something. Some uh, like few of the students will ask, okay, can I make a bank account uh, with my uh, visa? Well, actually, it could be possible. But it will the process will be like more time and ask more questions, so it will be little stuff. Stuff. Next, uh, for process of the how the process of the bank, as I mentioned, you bring all the papers that we said in the uh, previous slide, uh, prepare it and make a photocopy. Better to make photocopy on every paper you want, every paper you had and go to the branch that is near to you or near the university, it doesn't matter. It's a, like better to be near to you, near to the, the, um, the place you live and submit all the paper in the branch, in the bank, of course. And, and then you need to wait, uh, kind you need to wait for uh, two weeks. This according to the new regulation, you need to wait uh, for two weeks and then they will call you and receive and activate your bank account and give you the card, of course, of the bank. Sometimes um, uh, they will activate the card for you, and no, sorry, they will give you the card, and then you need to wait to be activated within two weeks. Uh, that's depend on the branch, but normally you need to wait and then to activate and give you the card after two weeks. So in China, normally there's more uh, than 60 different uh, banks in China, across China, of course. But uh, most of the students will ask which is the four famous or four top uh, banks in China that we can deal with. Um, first of all is ICBC Bank. Second is Bank of China. Third is ABC Bank. And fourth is Construction Bank of China. Like four of them is like the 
most popular and important here. However, like other branches, other names, uh, banks' names, all of them also accept uh, for null people, so don't worry about it. But these four is also important if like your uh, family decide to send you money internationally. So yeah, next. So this, we gave here an example of the branch here. Uh, it's called the ICBC branch as nearby to the international campus and if you want to walk there it take 20 minutes however um it show here as you can see in chinese it's open from monday to friday and from 9 a.m to 12 p.m and from 2 p.m to 5. normally guys you need to follow the time because um if you go a little bit late uh it's not a good thing because here in because in China you need to really follow the time, as they as they mentioned, of course. Uh, next we will talk about application and mini program number five. So um, as Gandhi mentioned that uh, if you want to go uh, and live outside the campus, if you decide, so you have like lots of agents that you can depend on um actually you need to go for the famous one because normally uh, if you go for agent who's not uh famous or anyone from the street of course it'll be scam so be careful so here are the four uh famous here in uh, in china first of all here we do have uh Lianjia. second is Ogoda, and third is uh 58 Tongchong, or we say it here in China, Uba Tongchong, and Baikla. Next, or Baikla. So how do you use this kind of apps? Let's say an example, this uh, Lianjia app. First of all, when you open, of course, you need a little bit understand the Chinese or translate the page each, each time. First of all, you choose the Zhu Fang, which means rent house. Second thing, you need to uh, provide here the address like normally if you as Gandhi mentioned there's a three uh, three branch of our university Ushan, Dashichan and international campus so you need to choose so you need to see which one that you will like um like go to take classes in and you need to put and you need to see like a nearby this area let's say an example the Dashichan that you will take most of classes in so you choose here Dashichan and then Press next. It will show you the available, um, normally show you available uh, houses to rent here each month. And it will show you more information when you select the um, house you like. It will show you more information here. Uh, basically, guys, you can also uh, talk with the agent directly or even text with him a message. It will be a good option for some people who is not uh, don't speak Chinese very well. So texting with the, the agent, you can at least translate what he said, or you translate your uh, from English to Chinese to like contacting the agent. So it will be a good option. However, uh, yeah, and that's it. Like my advice, just to look nearby to the university that you will go. Next, we will talk about here necessary application that you need. Um, actually, in the Siri application here, we have the most popular uh, searching engine in China, which is called Baidu. Normally, Google and all these services is not allowed here. So Baidu is one of them that you can um, use it um, to search for like lots of things. It's like a Google, but in Chinese version. And next of it, as we mentioned before, um, like we mentioned that how many uh, like uh, time it take to arrive from a uh, university to uh, how to say to the banks and actually we use these things which is called Gauda Ditu, which is like um, it's also have like easy name which is called also a map uh, this kind of maps uh, here in China is popular and of course the most used since is Google services not allowed Google map will not work so you have Gauda Ditu. You have a Baidu map and you have also something called Tencent map. Three of them, you can use it. N next, we will talk about here about uh, necessary application also. First of all is uh, Hello Tansha or Hello Tansha, which means Hello Share Bike. 
uh, normally in across the Guangzhou, you can find lots of bike you can rent. And however, the rent is so cheap, like 1.5 RMB each 30 minutes. And it's easy to use. However, this Hello bike, it's uh, available on Alipay in the mini app of Alipay and that we will talk about it later. Second of all, study in China. I think most of the students have it here. Study in China, like you can see your um, see your uh, GPA point, um, your schedule, uh, even registration for e uh, each uh, semester and this kind of things. So I think most of the students have it here. Next, VBN. As I mentioned, like Google services and all these things, uh, plus Facebook, WhatsApp, Snapchat, all these things is not available here. So of course you need a VPN to access to all these apps here in China. And normally there's a lot of type of VPN. Like you can see your roommate if he can uh, provide you one of, the, or like one of them, of course. The fourth thing here is logistic, it's Sainiao. Sainiao is like here in China, in our life, we basically depends on uh, buying uh, products in, from internet more than going to the market and buy it. So Sainiao is the station that you will go in to receive your package. And even if you're, if, even like if you want to return a package, like let's say you buy a product and you don't like it, normally Sainiao also uh, you can go to the platform that you buy uh, your product in and you sign in a sign for returning back the product and go back to start uh, tiny station and return back the package. Uh, normally, this is available on universities and areas in, in China. So it's one of the important things also. Next. And also in the necessary application, we say WeChat. Actually, WeChat, uh, more than 900 million people use it in China every day. However, WeChat is made it for chat, calls, videos, and made it for uh, transferring money, which have the service called WeChat Pay that we will talk about it later. And uh, basically, uh, it's like, uh, WhatsApp or maybe WhatsApp, Facebook, all together mixed, it will be WeChat. So yeah. And however, it will be the easy option. And uh, if you want to talk with your family, if you're in China and want to call your family, so WeChat will be easy option to contact with them. And of course you have here Alipay. Alipay also is the one of important platform to, uh, to pay money. However, WeChat Pay does it, does have this option, and Alipay is like uh, also an option to payment of money. Actually, the difference between WeChat Pay and Alipay is not that much, uh, but Alipay have one good function that you can um, you can activate the Alipay so if you have the Chinese phone number or, or internationally, and you can use it in China without bank account link. So during your uh, First day you come to China and activate your phone number. The first thing I think you would need to do is activate the Alipay and use it until you can also activate the WeChat Pay. Normally in China, 90% um, of your life it depends on WeChat Pay and Alipay because like here cash is acceptable, but um, normally you will listen for this uh, thing that when you pay money in cash, they will don't have the change to return it to you. So plus all the platforms online, it's also using this kind of things. Alipay and WeChat Pay. Next. And here a useful application that you might need here in China. First of all is NetAce Music, which is cloud music that you can use to listen to music every day, of course. Um, it's same as Spotify, Spotify that people use it internationally since Spotify is not also is not acceptable here. So net essay here, music uh, could be an option that you need. Uh, however, you need to subscribe each uh, month or each week or maybe each year you need. Um, basically, there's also another app which have the same thing. It's called the QQ Music. Both is famous and it uh, depends on you if you want to continue with Spotify, 
plus of course opening by the end to listen or just subscribe with this next one is uh billy billy actually billy billy is like so nice uh you can spend your free time in um billy billy is basically the same as tiktok functions uh of course famous in like tiktok but here in china normally if you're uh have a big videos long videos like 20 minutes or 30 minutes video you can watch it via billy billy of course um yeah it's nice you can free, spend your free time in and next we will talk about two things taobao and bindodo so two is really important in china why because taobao and bindodo both is like online platform that you will use to buy your products and um and money of uh, many of people who live in china of course depend depends on these um actually taobao is the number one in the top uh, where you can buy everything you need for your uh, house for your dorm for your room starting from your starting from phones computers uh, electronics things um even like small things that you need for your house like a tissue uh, or um or maybe something that the products that you need and however to Taobao to provide like some uh, something called Tmall uh, which is um important uh, Tmall is like a high, only high quality product some of people of course will look for these like when you buy a phone of course from internet you will be a little bit careful in Taobao to choose the Tmall it's called in Chinese also Tmao however there's a logo in the page that it will show you that is the high quality and officially from that company so Taobao also provide um, high quality uh, medium quality and low quality as you like it depends on the product of course and you can buy it uh today let's say you can buy today and pay using alipay and wechat of course there's no any cash uh, function and it will arrive to you at home from two to seven days if it's you live in the dorm and this kind of thing normal normally it will arrive to the tainiao station as we mentioned before and if you are living outside the campus normally it will arrive to your home door you just like order things and with i love to home door just open the door and take the package and that's it easy and bindodo also is the same as tabao as i mentioned but it um it's like cheaper and provide medium and low quality so if we want to buy something expensive like a phone iphone or maybe like laptop or any expensive things that you need and high quality of course you will choose Taobao. Bindo though it like required more options but in low and medium quality so that's the difference between them but all of them you can use it anytime and it will arrive to you at your dorm or home within two days to seven days next Olama and meituan basically these uh, like this too also um uh, it's like a food delivery it's like some countries they have something called uber eats or grab so this too is the same thing uh meituan and Olama. basically if you want to order foods from a restaurants that nearby to you even even if you want to order um uh, vegetables fresh vegetables you don't have to even to go to the market every day to buy vegetables or meat or anything Olama and meituan will do all this for you however there's a function in meituan of course um if you want to uh, use sharing bike like as a hello tansha that we mentioned before if there's also like some of power bank stations that you can rent a power bank also using meituan so Meituan provide more um, things. Olama is like next to Meituan, which mean Meitu, I mean Meituan is most popular in China and number one next to it is Olama. Olama sometimes it give you discount and little bit cheaper than Meituan. So of course it depends on your choice and which you like to use. But both of them, you can deliver all your food that you need, um, even you buying a vegetables and everything you need and arrive to your home within less than one hour however i want to mention something in meituan Oi, Gandhi. Gandhi, Gandhi. 
Uh, however, if you want to uh, mention something in Meituan, if you want to um, um, like send something from like your home to other home, like door by door, you can do this also with <laughs> you can also do this with Meituan. The last thing I want to talk about is uh, Xiao Hong Su, which means the in Chinese the red book. Actually, you can do this. Actually, you can uh, Xiao Hong Su is the same as Instagram, but in Chinese version. So you can see uh, what the people post and what they write in this kind of things and read like small stories from each like Chinese or basically all of all of the function in Chinese. But yeah, if you have a free time, also you can do it. Next. Okay, so here you have the mini program. Actually, um, if you are using WeChat and Alipay, uh, you don't have to download each apps uh, on your phone and maybe things. We can make it faster and more easier by put it inside the WeChat or inside the Alipay. Let's say an example here. You have the Yan Chen Tom, which is the right side. You use it for the public buses. Actually, this one, you can put it in the WeChat uh, mini programs and you can get it anytime you want. Uh, or uh, you have here GZIC Live. Uh, this one is made if you live inside the dorm. And we need to pay here um, the receipt of your electricity and water. However, uh, book the bus between branches. So all of these, actually, you can do it. However, there's a lot of function, like uh, as we mentioned for food delivery, Meituan and Alama, you can also put it as a mini program that you don't have even to download it in your phone. So you can put this as a mini program to use it anytime you want more faster and also save your, um, I save your phone storage if your storage is limited. Next. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, and uh, which is important also, the temporary resident permit and visa application. So I want to remind all the students here, which is really, really important, that your X1 visa is built for 30 days from the date of your entry, which means if you, if you arrive to China and they stamp your passport, Within 30 days, you need to finish all these steps um, and also uh, finish your permanent residence. Otherwise, uh, the immigration will find you 500 RMB each day. Oh, sorry, $500 each day, which means like kind of 3,000 RMB, which is new, it also will be not good for you. So you need to be careful in these things. Next. So I want to talk here about steps by steps that you could be used um, here. First of all, temporary resident permit that the visa that you will enter in China, of course. First of all, first first of all, you need to do is to prepare your materials visa application, like uh, as mentioned, like uh, photocopy of your uh, passport page information, uh, your visa information, the stamp of entry, and the paper what you have. And then go make an appointment with the student upper office in Ushan campus or university town campus. Normally it will be in university town campus um, and you can text the teacher using WeChat and see which is the available time for you to be there. Next, uh, after the teacher like uh, check all your materials and check everything, of course he or she will uh, make an appointment for you uh in the immigration office uh which is like important of course however you need to follow the time because time also is so important next later after you finish with the immigration uh normally it will give normally when you go to immigration and submit all your papers and your passport they because they will take it for um, according to their time like estimating time two weeks Normally, uh, they will give you a paper which is show the date of receive and the time that you will receive the passport. So no, you need to be careful and this paper keep it with you. So after you get back your passport uh, in that day from immigration, you need to need to go also to register and police register and police station with your passport and obtain accommodation registration form 
or for visitors, which mean uh, before that, you know, like uh, you will look for accommodation um, where you want to live in, as Gandhi mentioned. And there you, of course, uh, you need to register for a police station that will approve your address and where you live. And later, uh, even after you finish your uh, permanent residence and get your passport back, you need to go again and register in the same police station with the contract that you have signed um, with the owner of the house. And later, number six, uh, you need to submit the copy of registration form for students' affairs office, which is the same uh, same teacher that who um, who make the appointment uh, for immigration. Normally, he will ask you to submit it in WeChat, and sometimes he will ask you submit it by papers. It depends on the teacher, but you need to be careful and submit all the papers. Of course. So the things you need to prepare. Uh, before uh, you go to the immigration, I think lots of people like will be attention on this. Talk about this one. Why did uh, you talk since we come? You already finished all of those. Yeah, I know. Uh, first it's of all, some student will come in this semester. You want to ask anything? Okay, so let's continue here. Uh, first of all, you need to copy of passport page, as I mentioned before, and copy of your visa, which is important. And if, of course, you need a photocopy and better to be in, in uh, colorful, not in black and white. And accommodation registration form for visitors, which is like um, approval from the police where you live, that, that paper. We will also mention it later here. And uh, number four is for your physical exam is result, of course, after you finish the physical examination paper. Um, you will need to, um, they will, the physical examination department will give you two papers. One of paper you need to submit it to the immigration, which is this paper. Uh, number five here, receipt of China visa photograph for formal in quantum proofs and one photo. Actually, this uh, means that you need to go uh, in a special studio to take photos there and uh, to make a special paper photo which have the barcode on it and show it's like show that uh, show your photo, of course, and you need it. Uh, there in the immigration. Number six here, it's a copy of admission letter. Of course, that admission letter is important to approve it to immigration and you need the photocopy and better to be in colorful. And your original JW202, don't have to make a copy for it because they will take, normally JW202 is two paper, one of them in yellow, yellow and one of them in white. Uh, immigration will take one of them, so bring the original, of course, not a copy. However, you need to bring your passport, uh, like uh, original passport with you. So uh, this is the symbol uh, of the accommodation registration form for visitor, which is approve your address in China. However, this you can make it after, um, like when once you get your accommodation, of course, and you have the contract, then you take the contract and you take a photo of the um, the owner of the house, uh, I mean, the photo of his ID card. And plus you need your passport and you need to go there to the police, the nearest police station for you, and you need to register. However, you need to register this twice. First of all, when you get your um, house, uh, sorry, your accommodation, and second one, after you get your resident permit, you need to uh, update it. And this then the next one in the right side, which I talked about is the receipt of China visa photograph for formal in quantum proofs. Actually, it's a long name here, but um, this is the photo that immigration need, not a normal photo, because it will they will take it electronically by scanning the barcode. So yeah, and however, this, um, one is available this like paper it's available only for one year so i think each year you need to print it or you go to the studio and issue a new one next 
Uh, so here the uh, like also an example for a physical examination recalled issue by Guangzhou International Travel Health Care Center. Um, this is like um, like an example for it. Uh, normally, as I mentioned, uh, there's two paper the examination record department will ask for. First of all, this one, and they will give you this one, and they will give you another closed uh, sealed um paper which you will not open it of course until the immigration open it there so you need to keep it with you until go to immigration of course next so here the materials also the admission letter and jw202 or d01 uh these two of course uh you need to contact the teacher um in tashichan or the teacher of charge and if you have it, uh, you need to keep it safe with you and better, better to make a copy of it because you will use it for lots of places, such as like examination record and the banks. Next. For here, again, accommodation registration form for visitor. As I mentioned, this is the um, paper uh, from the, it will be stamped from the police, of course, to approve your uh, address in China. So here, like um, advice, a note, sorry, a note. If you live outside like, of campus, uh, you, uh, but must be in Guangzhou, of course, you need to register in local police station. However, you need to bring your, with you a passport, printing contract, and your land uh, lord, uh, and then you will get the, this form. Normally this form, um, when you apply for it in the police station, sometimes you can uh, take like it depends on the station, of course. There's a station fast that you can get it at the same day, and there's station little bit slow process that it take two to three days. So you need to be um, careful of it, and you need to be careful also to be your address in Guangzhou because if it's not in Guangzhou, it will be a headache for you, and it will take a long time process. However, it will be prohibited to you to make your um, residence permit with immigration. So here your physical examination recalled result issued by Guangzhou uh, International Travel Healthcare Center. <laughs> I know it's a long name. So as I mentioned before, you can do this uh, um, in WeChat and you can check it in WeChat or, or check it from here. Normally when you finish your examination record and finish all the process, they will give you a small paper with have the barcode and your name, and even when you will receive uh, your um, physical examination record paper. So yeah, you can check, check by link or you can like, depends on the paper and go at the same date that they uh, provide you to, do, to go. Next. So here for receipt of China visa photograph, I mean, as I mentioned, as I show you guys in the last uh, slide, the photo. Normally, you can go to any uh, for, uh, any studio available here in Guangzhou. If you live here in district, uh, in district, each district have lots of areas, and each area, of course, does have the studio that you can go there and take the photos for your immigration and even for your um, uh, for the physical examination report. Of course, since they also provide the photos. Next. Admission letter and JW. As I mentioned, guide you need to contract. Uh, you need to can contact the teacher in admission office. And as I mentioned, some of you I think who got the JW and it's with him already. So keep it safe. And yeah, uh, keep it safe because you need it later. As I mentioned, in when you want to make an appointment or in immigration. So here, like uh three um, also popular branch here uh, for immigration addresses. Uh, first one is the entry and exit reception hall for foreigner of Guangzhou Public Security Bureau. Normally this is located in Yishu district. Each district in Guangzhou does have one immigration office. And this is the main one actually, which is located in Yishu district. Second one in Tianha Visa uh, Application Center, this all located in Tianha's district, of course. Uh, to be honest, it's a little far away from the city and you need the time to arrive there. 
but yeah it's there if you like if you had the chance to go there or uh maybe it was the only option so yeah and Panyu Visa Application Center, this is the nearest one to our university and international university and Tashi Chan. And it's also located in the Panyu district, the same district as our university. Normally, these things, um, where to go, it decided by the teacher who will book the appointment for you. So yeah, these three and yeah, as we mentioned. Uh, and we want to mention important thing here that this PBT is for reference only and the specific situation might be slightly different, which means um, if you are going, as I mentioned, if you're going to police station to approve your address there, it might take you one, uh, you can get it at the same day or you get it at, after three days, it depends on the situation and the, for physical examination record, you might um take an appointment but you need to wait to the you need to wait seven or eight days to get an appointment so more fast you get more fast like you your process the of course the more uh fast you will be finish all your process so yeah and also even for um here uh for summary here sorry for summary here um it's also the important thing that we will mention all these steps is important and my advice guys please um be fast if you are fast you can finish this fast but if you're a little bit slow you will face a lot of headache and a lot of uh late times and this kind of things so the first thing you need here actually your phone number as gandhi mentioned before it's really important everything linked on Online platform, WeChat Pay, Alipay, immigration, police, everything is depends on phone number. Once you got, once you get your phone number, of course, the first thing you need to do is booking physical examination record appointment. Since uh it's uh you need to wait one week and two weeks until you go to the appointment. And sometimes you need to wait also one week to, to 10 days until you get your results. So you need to be fast in this third which is will be nice activating alipay for payment as i mentioned 90 percent of your life in china will depends on alipay and wechat pay but alipay you can do it without linking bank account for who don't have bank account already so uh yeah activating alipa alipay when you have your phone number and use it in china is important Number four, take official picture uh, for places. You need eight pictures, of course. Uh, normally, normally here, uh, you need eight pictures. Why Why we said eight pictures? Because you need more than, four, you need four pictures for examination record. And also you need a, uh, four pictures also for other stuff like uh, immigration and this kind of stuff. So it's really important to have eight, eight pictures. However, plus the paper, as I mentioned, for the immigration with the PAR code, it's important. Five, get the uh, accommodation verification form from the police. As we mentioned like twice, uh, the paper, but which approve, um, approve your address in China and have the stamp. And be careful that you would be, must be in Quanzhou. And but if, if it's not in Quanzhou, you will face a problem to even get appointment for the immigration. Uh, as soon as you get accommodation, of course, if you like sign the contract already and you find, or even your roommate has already uh, signed a contract and just arrived to your accommodation, then you get the contract and auto and go to the police station as fast as you can get to get the paper. Six, go to physical examination record. Of course, after you make appointment, this kind of things, you will go there and finish all the process with estimating time, take 40 to 50 minutes. After you finish, they will give you a small paper with a barcode uh, that it will show you when you will receive your result. And as I mentioned, it depends on how busy the department is. Sometimes you can get it in five days or six days, sometimes to seven, sometimes if it's late up to seven to 10 days. So yeah, it depends on how big, how like busy the department is. Seven, go to the university teacher. Of course, after you finish your examination record and you have the result, 
and you have your police uh, address, which is above your address, of course. And you have the eight uh, picture we have mentioned and everything. You will go to the teacher. Normally, you can text him in better to text him in WeChat before you arrive. And he or she will um, book for you the, the appointment and make sure uh, that um, you have all the pick all the papers, uh, photocopy and each paper that you need because the immigration, of course, will take a papers. And one of them is the police uh, address. So yeah, try to make sure you have copies. Eight, go to immigration office for resident permit appointment. Actually, the, as I mentioned, the teacher will decide when and where to go to the immigration office. And he will provide, he or her will provide the uh, inform, more information about it. And when you arrive to immigration office at that day, you will receive, you will put your, all your passport and submit all the paper you have and these things. And the, of course, the immigration will give you a paper that it show when you will go to receive your passport. Nine, collect your passport after your ZIM permit is ready. As I mentioned, the, uh, you go to the date that they will give you. Normally, they will write it in the paper and give you a barcode. And however, you need to pay a fees for it um, later, like 400 RMB, as I remember. And then go to the police station again and update your resident information. Uh, as I mentioned, you have made before the police uh, address, police certification, which is have your address. You need to update it because when you update it also, they will put the new residence uh, permit number. And the last thing you need to do is apply for bank account. Since you have already all this, you can go and apply for a bank account if you, have, of course, you have a resident permit. Uh, actually, I want to uh, tell you two important things. Uh, some of the students might ask, uh, uh, can I apply for a bank account before I come to China? Uh, be, sorry, be, before I uh, apply for a resident permit. Actually, it could be possible, but it will take a long process, uh, lots of questions. And also, if it's estimating time, two weeks might take three weeks to four weeks, according to the new regulation, of course. So yeah, and the second point, which is related to first, better guys, just for sure, to bring cash with you when you arrive to China. Because like estimating time to finish all this and apply for a bank account, it take around from estimating time from four weeks to six weeks. And you know, cash also with you in dollar or RMB doesn't matter. It's like important. And for emergencies also, also no one know what will happen. So that's all information that we have for the lecture. Thank you guys for listening for us. If you have any question, you could ask. You guys can open your mic and ask if you want. Bro, I have a question. I'm from CS19 batch. Okay, go uh, ahead. So like my question is like I asked our head teacher that uh, can I get a dormitory room in China, and she said that C fifteen is full now. CCO, it is full now. So is there any other dormitory that I can get a seat on? Um. Well, actually, if you want official dormitory from uh, our university, like it's not available. Uh, but it, but the only thing you can do in this case is just look for any uh, mates or classmates, roommate doesn't matter you know, and mm -hmm. uh, you just like uh, contact them and like rent together as Gandhi mentioned before these things. The thing is, I had a room in C fifteen in two thousand nineteen. I used to live there, but they said it's full now. And uh, I heard there is like another dormitory called International Student Dormitory. Is there any other room, uh, any room available in there now? Do you have well, any information for, with that? Okay, for this kind of dormitory thing, as I mentioned, like I don't have inside university, I don't have like much information about it. As I uh, better to ask the teacher again, like sorry, I can I cannot help with this thing. If you want, uh, you? as I mentioned, if you want outside, then yeah, as we mentioned in this PDA, BBT. However, we could also uh, send the BDF and BBT as a reference later. 
but as as related to your question, I'm oh. really sorry. I cannot help with these things. Or give more it's information. Okay, about Thanks. Thanks you are welcome. Uh, Nadine also here asked a question about official picture. Actually, it doesn't matter if you're wearing white shirt or black shirt, green, pink. It doesn't matter the color. The most important, the background be better to be in a blue background as it's supposed to be for immigration and that's it. Yeah, the BBT letter was sent it to our group. Because actually for pick, uh, pick up from the airport, um, you could ask the teacher in university about it. Uh, I mean, if you will live inside the dormitory, but if you live outside the campus, well, mm, I don't think so. So, but at the at the two ways, better to ask the teacher of charge. Uh, well, for process, as we said, someone asked here, the process what we said here in our BBT, uh, normally, if it's like all the same, of course, uh, but some, something is different between old students and new students. So the old student already, they have a bank account. They have a Chinese phone number before. Chinese phone number, I think it's must be expired and no longer used, but who have a bank account already, uh, he need to go again to the same branch and update his information and it will activate it fast. Even he not, don't have to wait for two weeks for it. Uh, how can I found my Alipay account when I come new into China? Actually, um, opening bank account or especially Alipay in China is so easy. It will not take any um, long, uh, like long process, just like phone number, your passport, this kind of things. And that's it. But the only thing you need to do, and it's like a little bit complicated, you need to find someone who already have Alipay with a bank account to oh, top up your Alipay uh, balance. This is an important thing you need to, I forget to mention to be, to be honest, but yeah. And you can pay him or her in cash. Uh, actually, you need to find anyone, even if it's Chinese person on the street. You just give him in cash and he will give you an Alipay. That's it. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah. here... Like I'd like to add oh, one sorry. more point to that. Uh, there's a feature in Alipay that's uh, that is tour pass, and you can use that for a, for a certain time. It's not a permanent a permanent solution, but you can use that for the meantime that you don't have anything. For example, if you can't find a a Chinese citizen or a friend in China to help you to top up, you can use tour pass Ali in Alipay. It allows you to use a credit card, uh, an international credit card, and you can use it uh, for Alipay. That's one yeah. of the solutions. Yeah. Yes, this also could be possible, as can the um, uh, mate said. And also, if you want to uh, make it, how to say, uh, just look for anyone you trust or anyone you know, roommate, anyone, doesn't matter. You just give him in cash and he will give you an Alipay. Because I mentioned 90% or more than 90% of your use, all of them is online platforms. Even buying a vegetables now is online, so yeah. Uh, does all banks require resident permit? Actually, yes, all of them require the same information. Which size of official picture that we choose to take? Actually, this one uh, official picture, the size, uh, the studio who will make it, don't worry about it, the studio who will make the one. You just mentioned them, it's for immigration, and yeah, he will do it for you easy. We need to make up. The other apartment. Actually, resident permit, you don't have to uh, update it, of course, if you move to other apartment. But the only thing you need to um, update it is your police uh, address, that the police uh, approval that you, um, that you live in this area. The certification of accommodation, that's all. That's the only thing you need to approve. And there's a student from old, uh, uh, from student from 2019 asked clear, uh, do we need to get to go physical examination and uh, other process for visa? Actually, yes, 
you need to go for physical examination since uh, it's been a long time for this, more than three years. So yeah, you need. Any other guys have any other like question to ask? We're available now. I see. I see one question above. Someone asked for VPN recommendation. Uh, mm -hmm. You can uh, PM me later. I'll text in the group and I'll send you a recommendation later. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone with questions that you want to ask? Anyone have a question? Please free to ask. Uh, I think I already have insurance. Do I still to buy a Chinese insurance still? Well, actually, it de uh, for this question, insurance, it depends on the expiration. So you better to see the expiration first. And yeah, that's it. How, how to protect our things from... Mm, I think Gandhi will have a good answer for the last question, right? Uh, I'm not sure either. What do you mean from humidity? You mean while you're flying or in general in your house or what? Uh, is there a specific place to take PCR test in? When I went to China, yes, there was a specific place you need to take PCR test in. Uh, and that you need to confirm with your airlines because it, every time it changes. So you need to contact the airlines with via WeChat or email or WhatsApp, and then you need to confirm with them. They usually have a PDF that you can just follow through. Uh, what time do you need to take the PCR test and what place? Is there any other questions? So we'll come until five. If there is an, there is no more questions, then maybe we can end the talk today. Okay, and I assume everyone is clear with this. And yeah, uh, not to worry, we will send the PDF version later in the group. So however, can, our yeah. however our PDF does also have more information that you will need it um during like the first month in your China. So don't worry about this. Yes, and you can always look for teachers if you have any other questions. I think we can end this with a photo session. Yeah, so um, if you are convenient enough to on your camera, can you please do so, so we can take a picture together? Okay, give me some time. Okay, everyone get ready. One, two, three. Go on, I think there is still another slide. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. I think that's it. And yeah, we will prepare the lecture tickets as soon as we can. Then we will send into the group, okay? So yeah, thank you everyone for joining. We hope to see you in China soon. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Walid. You are welcome, Amrin. You are welcome. Thank you, Gandhi. You're welcome, too. Bye-bye. Okay, goodbye, man. Goodbye. Have a great night. Uh, actually, someone here asked, once we land in China, we will get guided to make the resident permit. Actually, uh, you can contact us, of course, and, you know, like, you can DM me here, uh, DM me in WeChat and things. And we will send, uh, as we mentioned, we will send the PDF for you. So, uh, and more BBTs that will explain more things and more details that you could do. So don't worry about these things.